To, well, to tie it back, I guess just to final this out, I guess how do you overall feel between Apple's approach to security versus Google's approach to security? And do you think that one is overall safer? And again, there are different services, like no. you said, different target demographics. But um, mm-hmm. I, I also think at the end of the day, it, it kind of isn't in a way because from an end user perspective, from a Henry perspective, my two core choices, unless I'm going to go into custom ROM world, yeah. is iPhone and Apple ecosystem or Android device with Google ecosystem. And they kind of have yeah. similar services. So where do you overall think um, the approaches tend to like line up? I think they each have their strengths and weaknesses. I think Google is great with anything that is cloud services and Apple is great with anything that's hardware and operating systems. That's my personal view. Don't uh, like I haven't seen the source code for any of these things. So I'm merely speculating based on what I see the trend in the industry, right? Google has been doing a lot of great work in the realm of cloud services. So like Apple's email is nowhere near comparable to Gmail right now, if you think about it. No professional who respects their email security probably uses iCloud, if you think about how strange that is. And similarly, I don't think any professional reporter or activist or journalist uses um, iPhones. Uh, sorry, they, use, they don't use Android, but is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So I think like people who respect their privacy and security tend to use Apple hardware, but Google software. So take what you want from it. And I guess <laughs> Chromebooks would things. be the one exception. I suppose so, yes. And I think yeah. it, it's merely because it's very dumb as a device. And that's a good thing sometimes. Like it, yeah. if you think about what that does, it's just there's nothing on it. It's a browser. So you access everything that's in the cloud and otherwise it doesn't store anything on it. So it's a shell, which is great. Like if you don't want your devices to be smart, if you're traveling, it, it makes sense. Yeah. Got it. But yeah, I think they have strengths and weaknesses. And I would categorize it in my mind as while their services do sound similar when you think about iCloud and whatnot, I think... Google is focusing more on the cloud services and Apple on the hardware. And as long as you can keep church and state separate, it makes sense, I would say. But that's my my personal view. Makes sense. I think it's a good approach. I I think it's a good way of looking at it. I don't know. If if you ask me what would you tell your parents to use, I would say iPhone. I wouldn't tell them to use it. Almost always iPhone. And this is a big topic of discussion. I've gotten so much crap for that. Um, where I'd be like, well, I'm going to recommend an iPhone to someone I know. And people go, yeah, but what if they want to use a custom ROM? And it's like, they won't. Just, I don't think, like, like even I second guess using a custom ROM sometimes, and I'm yeah. somebody who's very involved with this space. Same. I cannot in any, like, if I actually give a crap about the people around me, <laughs> because that's the same argument where people go, the people around you should be taking the privacy and security seriously. If you care about them, yeah. you're going to have them move over to a custom ROM. Yeah. On the other hand, I actually care about them and their lives and, like, how they have that's lives why. outside of this, as they yeah. should have, and I don't actually want to impose a custom ROM. Yeah. If they come to me and go, Henry, I want to be free. And this is also another misconception because, um, yeah. like if I, if I'm dealing with clients with uh, direct coaching, a lot of people think that like what we do is we just tell them what to do. And it's not that at yeah. all. It's a very yeah. personal experience where they tell me yeah. what their goals are. And then when mm-hmm. they tell me their goals, then we dive into, okay, well, if you're trying to be free of big tech companies, then yeah. obviously buying an iPhone is completely incompatible with that goal. But yeah. for my friends and family who just want to be a little bit safer, yeah. they don't want to be part of, I guess, the worst of the worst. Um, generally speaking, like it's the iPhone is a no-brainer, especially now that you can just enable ADP, yeah. which even they can probably use, and they can get end-to-end yeah. encryption. Which how are you going to do that on stock Android? Like, I com- mean, like no, valid it, it question. Makes no sense. On, and also on a cus- like, on a custom yeah. ROM, how are you going to get end-to-end encrypted photos? End-to-end encrypted everything pretty much in the entire ecosystem that's just natively built in and super easy to use. You don't have to find 10 individual Precisely. services. Like, exactly. Crazy. And I'm but, saying this as someone who has an end-to-end encrypted, like in that sense, client-side encrypted photo store service. Right. Like, I wouldn't want you to use Crypty on a custom ROM. Just go use an iPhone. Damn it. Just use the <laughs> iCloud photos if that's your goal. I'm not going to tell my mom to download a custom ROM. I'm not going to tell my dad to use a custom ROM. It doesn't make any sense. However, technically seven day maybe. Um, and I, I think it doesn't make sense, but they do use scripting in case if you're wondering. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey there, thanks for watching this TechLore clip. I just wanted to say, if you enjoyed this content, we have many other clips on this channel that you can get subscribed to. Otherwise, you can check out our full channel at TechLore where we talk about digital rights, privacy, security, open source, Linux, and many other exciting topics to keep you safer online. We'll see you over there, and we hope you enjoyed this clip.